Out of ammo. Hickok 45 here, shooting up against the barrel. Did we damage it? Maybe not, maybe not. Oh, oh, did too. Look at the holes it put in it. The blast from the cylinder gap. <laughs> Believe that. 357 Magnum, model 19. If you can read, you already knew that, didn't you? And those are all empties. So let's go here and dump them out and talk about what the heck we have here. What is a model 19 3? Anybody know? Let's go take a look at it. It is actually an old Smith & Wesson Model 19, like the one I started out with. That's why I have obtained it, okay? I have the other one you have seen. It is a Model 19.5. It's lying on the table. Boy, they look alike, don't they? And they're very similar, very, very similar. And we're gonna talk a little bit about uh, the differences, although there's not a lot there, but uh, and then why I would buy this one, because who needs two Model 19s? Nobody, right? Well, need, there's that word again. And speaking of that, we wanna thank, we're glad you're here, and uh, it's shady kinda of over here on the Gong Club range. Again, another advantage of it. Uh, and uh, so we're gonna have some fun with this particular revolver over here. Yep, I grew up with these. Uh, this is uh, one of those snob, of uh, Smith & Wesson's. It's pinned and recessed, as they say. You know, we've shown you that before. We may do a separate video on that sometime, some of those things, but you know, it, it has the recessed uh, chambers. The head fits down in there, flush, and the barrel is pinned, that little pin right there, okay? And that's essentially, uh, I think, the biggest difference, maybe almost the only difference between these two models right here. This is a Dash 3, and this one that I've had is a Dash 5. And uh, I'm going to sell that to John. So it's sort of a trade. I kind of traded. And now his is in better shape. This one is like new, essentially. And it was made in the 80s. And it's, uh, it, it's not pinned and recessed, but it is everything else. It's old. It's got the hammer-mounted firing pin. It's uh, all steel, no MIM parts, you know, on these. And uh, just like, like this older one. So this one's probably around 10 years older, maybe 12 or 15 years older, all right? Smith & Wesson's, strangely enough, they're harder to get the exact date on than a, a Colt single action. I can, I, you, tell me your serial number on your Colt single action and I'll tell you what year it was made. I can tell you very quickly, I got a couple of references, it's online, you know, what year it was made. But with these, it's, uh, you can get a range, you gotta do the research, you gotta uh, write to Smith & Wesson to get the exact uh, time, uh, especially month, but even to get the, the year, you can get it with pretty close. This one was like 71, 72, 70, long in there, okay, based on the serial number. And, and I've done a lot of looking around the web. It's, it's just weird. I, I guess I didn't realize that. I haven't researched as many Smiths as I have Colts and other, other firearms. But uh, that's the ballpark on them. The, the, the Dash 5s came out in, I think they started in 82. So we know it's after 82. And, you know, it could be 85 or 6, or I, don't, I don't know. And I know this one was, I think, prior to 83, 73, probably 71, 72, along in there, I think. Uh, but kind of forgot. Uh, but anyway, I, my first double action, my first big board firearm in my life that I purchased was in 73 was a, a Ruger, I probably told you this, a Ruger Blackhawk. Not a Super, but a Ruger Blackhawk 45 Colt. <laughs> not, not too surprising. My first big gun, other than a 22 was and my second gun totally that I purchased was a 45 Colt. Uh, and it was the Ruger Blackhawk. It was the old action, you know, just like the Colt, you know, you had to half cock it to load it and all that. And it was right there in 73 when, uh, and then that's when that change took place, the new actions on the, on the, the Rugers, you know, to where they had the transfer bar and all that. But mine was an old one and traded it off like everybody does, you know, things they wish they hadn't traded off. And then my second, big caliber firearm, large caliber firearm, center fire firearm, pistol, handgun, was one of these. It was a Model 19, I bought it at Bill Clay's Sporting Goods in Nashville, Tennessee. It was in Melrose. If you're from the area, you know where I'm talking about. It's uh, Melrose has changed a lot <laughs> in the last few years. Uh, it was right there across from where Walgreens is now. It was right close to the McDonald's there on that end of, uh, of Melrose on Franklin Road. Uh, there's a Kroger up on the hill across from it. Anyway, I think it's a Goodwill 
store now, or at least it, it was, yeah, but it was Bill Clay's Sporting Goods. It went in there in 73, and it was six inches barrel. That's the only difference. It was this gun, the same vintage, same vintage. You know? uh, I, don't, I'm, I think I can dig out the serial number on it from somewhere, because that's back of 14 computers back. You know? uh, well, it was actually prior to computers, uh, but I had them all written down. Then I had them on my Mac early, my early days. I think I still have the serial number somewhere. I'm going to see how close it was to this one. But it was a six inch. And I've always entertained the thought of maybe getting another pinned and recessed Model 19 to replace it. Because that one too, I traded off. So that's the sad story a lot of us have, don't we? But it's really neat to have this vintage uh, Model 19 back in hand. And there's so many things you've seen in the videos we've done with that one. I'll do what I was going to say here. See, I didn't forget after all. But, uh, you know, I've talked about the K-Frame. These are the, the K-Frame Smith & Wessons. Uh, gosh, they made so many K-Frame revolvers in 38 Special. and I mean, everything, 22, you name it, 357 Magnum. Bill Jordan was largely responsible for this. I meant to bring the box out. I've got the box with this, believe it or not. It actually says Combat Magnum on it, 357. And uh, this, this is the Combat Magnum. The perfect size frame, perfect size gun. I've always thought it was interesting and, and a little coincidental that the, what a lot of people would say, now some of you will gag, but that the perfect Glock, <laughs> you're already gagging, is the Model 19, the Glock 19. You know, and, and, and it's kind of like this. It's a mid-size, just a great size, fits most people's hands just fine. Big enough, not too big. Powerful enough, not overly powerful, you know, kind of. So they're both 19s and two of the most popular handguns of the last, what, 60 or 70 years uh, have had 19 in the name. Isn't that amazing? Uh, again, whenever you see this, this is, uh, well, you saw the date. Yeah, it's October 3rd. Uh, this is about six weeks into my uh, broken hand, cast off. I'm supposed to be wearing the brace. It's there on the table, and I do wear it most of the time. But I just make sure I don't lift anything. He told me not to lift anything, uh, you know, and I'm not supposed to be shooting a 44 Magnum with my, <laughs> my left hand. So, so I'll shoot one-handed here. But, yeah, on the mend, on the mend, okay? But uh, so it feels good to get back out with some favorite firearms. Firearms that I shoot one-handed most of the time anyway. You know, it's not really a one-handed video, but I tend to shoot them with one hand, and I've got good use of my hand as far as loading and unloading, and so it's just kind of cool to be back with a really cool uh, handgun and a revolver. The Model 19, again, Bill Jordan uh, of the Border Patrol, famous gun writer, uh, was uh, in, in great shot. A competitor was uh, responsible largely for, for this K-frame, the N357 Magnum. Uh, coming about it has its detractors where you know the forcing cone if you shoot nothing but powerful magnums you know can end up cracking the forcing cone after extensive use and yeah I never have had that trouble with any of the k-frames that I've owned and shot model 66s or 13 just anything but I think some people have uh, but but great and I don't know so many uh, police departments uh, carried this gun right here exactly like this, you know, in the 60s and 70s. Uh, State Patrol, uh, I mean, you can do the research. The Model 19 4 inch, this was it. It's exactly like this one. Yeah, exactly like it. Now, later on, they, they, they changed the grip a little. You see there where, so that you, these are always going to be scratched here, be, right in this area, because, uh, you know, shells coming out and then also speed loaders. They got a little bit of that wood out of the way so that you could uh, operate a speed loader a little bit better and wouldn't have as much wood in the way. So, but uh, that's the really the most obvious change right there other than the pin barrel and recessed uh, cylinder chambers. So pretty cool. So now John will have a 19 and I will have a 19 and I will have the 19 of my youth. I don't know if that was really my youth, but it was a while back when I first got into firearms. And it's fun to think about walking around. I walk around dad's farm just like I do my own now, plinking with that old Model 19 I had. I shot that thing so much. I lived in Franklin, Tennessee at the time. Uh, there was an old uh, dump landfill out there. And I'd go out there and shoot uh, at old refrigerators and cars and things people had dumped out there. 
from long range and short range and do penetration tests on bumpers and everything with this and my 44s i just it was a great place to shoot probably wasn't even supposed to shoot there i don't know but i remember being out there with uh, my old model 19 and it's also where i learned to wear earplugs because uh i don't know i just didn't wear them a lot of the times starting out and i was out there one time i remember and i fired a round off a hot round and oh boy my ear hurt and uh from then on i started wearing earplugs huh what'd you say let's just shoot the pumpkin yeah <laughs> shot him off there <laughs> i'm gonna double action that two liter Ooh, i'm gonna double action that hog uh oh did i miss yeah <laughs> i missed him the first time all right it's not got a bad double action I'm not going to work on it probably or try to smooth it up or anything like that. I, it's just kind of is what it is. I might paint the front sight. That is one thing I'm going to miss on this 19. That uh, I don't know when they started putting the red ramp on there. That might have been the uh, model 19.4 or the 19.5 like this one. But uh, that really helps a lot, uh, just immensely. So I will probably paint the front sight and uh, I don't know, the rear sight's not uh, outlined either like this one is so so those are two major improvements in uh, the smith and wessons now the 44s had that uh of the the same vintage so i don't know it's just different. and it may have been they made uh model 19s the same year and some of them had the white outline and red ramp and some didn't i i just don't know i don't think mine did my other one my first one so because i remember really liking that on the model 29 i bought in 74 but boy, cool, cool revolver. And uh, one thing I was going to show you, shooting those double action reminded me. I think I've shown you all this before. Some people do smooth up their action because they want a, a really smooth double action. And part of that is weakening it. And you can just loosen the spring, the mainspring in there, and you can get it uh, a lot lighter to where it's easier to pull. But you notice, uh, just I'm, I'm not going to charge you all for this, I promise. This little tidbit. But when you cock the hammer, and pull the trigger see how far back that hammer is you pull the trigger see it's 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 coming from further away than than when you just do a double action now watch when i watch where it falls from see that it doesn't go back as far okay isn't that a thrilling little factoid i'm just full of them today but so the hammer if you're going to have a misfire you might not realize it until you pull double action Okay, if you weaken that mainspring too much, you loosen it, you slick it up too much. I remember a lot of guys doing that. Oh, hey, feel this action. Isn't it wonderful? You be out at the range, yeah, it's great. It's like glass. You know, and you start shooting their gun and click, click, you know, it's not popping the primer, so you gotta watch that. But anyway, that's just something I remember from back in the 70s. When I had one of these, just like this. Let's go to some magnums again here. How about that? Bouncing back and forth, Magnum and Specials. I haven't any trouble yet. Usually you won't unless you're shooting really dirty ammo. Well, you will eventually, probably. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, is you know the 38 Specials are a little shorter, and so you get a ring of dirt a little further back, right where the Magnum needs to go when you push it in there, see? But I'm not having any trouble yet. So generally you don't. You're just gonna go out and fire you know, a mixture of them, and uh, you're just gonna fire 30, 40 rounds. All right, cowboy. Let's wake you up, buddy. Yeah. Why don't we go ahead and see if we can wake up the gong over there? I forget about him. All right. I have no idea where to hold. I haven't shot this too much. Any other excuses I can come up with? Okay, sounded like I hit it. That sounded better, like a hit. <laughs> oh, I know we need to shoot the wall with these magnums. Oh, I love that. Huh? No, I thought I missed it. <laughs> that would be funny. This ought to be a click. Yeah. <laughs> Let's load up six more of those and uh, shoot the wall. That is fun. All right, now being careful, Doc, if you're watching, I'm sure he watches gun videos. <laughs> like he doesn't have enough to do uh, in his uh, chosen profession. 
orthopedics and uh, plus he's a, a psychological counselor that's why I saw him <laughs> just kidding all right I'm gonna shoot that wall some more Boom. let's go double action click all right that's fun and again i can never do a revolver video without uh, preaching a little bit uh, can't move my little finger very well yet it's it's beginning to loosen up a little bit but uh, uh, a revolver is so much fun as you see a variety of ammo these uh, 38 specials even plus p are, are very comfortable to shoot these things 38 special 158 grain lead they are really comfortable to shoot uh, this is the old classic. Hard to believe, you know, we all get so bent out of shape on the on bullet design, don't we? And argue, you know, which is the best, you know, Hydroshock or uh, Gold Dot, whatever it might be, uh, HST. You know, you're just not armed if you don't have HST or you don't have Gold Dot or whatever. <laughs> and for decades and decades and decades, this is what people carried. You know, 38 Special with a lead round nose bullet, you know. Uh, so, and I'm sure there are some folks who would have preferred to have something better, but hey, right, let's shoot the wall with these, see if we can tell any different. I'll just shoot a couple of them into it. I'll shoot the upper left part of it, maybe. Yeah, left part, anyway. Yeah, it didn't seem to dig or hit as hard. See what it does on the hog. Oh, there I go, shooting two-handed. I'm not supposed to do that. Hey, it's good though. It didn't hurt at all. I didn't feel it. So, but you know, when you're shooting with, uh, I mean, you really shouldn't have a lot of pressure with your left hand. Tell you the truth, it's just you're just sort of cradling it, and you're you're going to work with the right hand and all that and finger. So, and plus the the damage to my left hand was down here. I broke the bone right there. It's my little finger that's not quite right yet. It's just part of my hand. You know, pretty far away from you know anything. You know that. That I do up here on this end of my hand. How's that for brilliant? So uh, it's it's fun. I may just shoot all day, and uh, y'all have to just wander off on your own. I'll shoot six more magnums. Anything else I didn't tell you about this? Again, I'm a pinned and recessed snob to some extent, and 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 I have said before, it's not because really that I am a, a big snob. I might be big, but it's because of the ones I grew up with. You know. It's just, it, it just is. I got into guns, you know, it's just like the first music you're into when you're a teenager. That's probably going to be the music you just can never get away from. You just like it. Like I grew up with the Beatles and the Rolling Stones and everything in the 60s and in my teenage years. Uh, and then in my, my early years of buying guns and collecting shooting, you know, in the early 70s when I first got into it in a big way, the guns I was buying and trading. They were these, you know, I've, I've said that before in some video. Uh, they just looked like that. They had that pin in the barrel. They had the, the recessed chambers, counterbore chambers, as I think they're actually called. Uh, had these, these grips, that safety or that cylinder latch, and that hammer with a firing pin on it, exactly like that. And, you know, that's just, that's just what uh, I traded around and bought and, and shot. So it's kind of a nostalgic thing for me in, in a lot of ways. Otherwise, you know, I can't really beat this firearm. You know, this one, the same. It's no MIM parts, you know, the uh, hammer-mounted firing pins. It's all the good stuff, you know, that, that Smith & Wesson used to offer. Now, they still, they have a re-offering uh, uh, issue or whatever, the Model 19 Classic, they call it. And we're going to show you that here uh, one day before too long. And, uh, you know, it shoots and does fine. I've actually shot one. And we'll talk about and compare and do some of that. Okay. But today is all about history and the vintage. I, I am going to shoot six more. I, I lied. I'm sorry. Can't help it. I'll shoot 38 special. See this? Well, they should go in okay. They're shorter. But yeah, really, the versatility of a revolver is really cool. And then, of course, of a 357 Magnum, it doesn't really get any better because you can, you can shoot loads like these I was shooting. Uh, you know, I, without thinking, I was shooting two handed. Uh, and I, it, I didn't even didn't even catch it because it's almost like shooting a 22, you know, not much recoil. Okay, and these aren't bad either. All right. Okay, 
let's just hit a little steel here to wrap things up. Let's go double action. Yeah, Mr. Cowboy, you're lucky I was empty. <laughs> yeah, it's just spread a little lead around there. So, look at that smoke. Good old Smith & Wesson. What a classic. Vintage, vintage revolver. Glowing in the sunlight. Pretty nice. Uh, glad to have one again. And I've had the option of getting a six incher like I had before. And you know, I just decided I would, this is close enough, you know, cause I, I really, I, I just like this configuration better. If I had been more experienced uh, at shooting, well, I wasn't really experienced much at all when I bought the other one. I would have bought a four inch then, yeah. Uh, and you know, I like the shorter barrels generally. So anyway, that's it. I'll get those empties out and I'm gonna let you guys go because I know you all are busy. We are busy, we have a lot of shooting to do, but other than that, we're, we don't have a lot to do today. So we're just gonna continue shooting and I'll probably put a few thousand rounds through this thing today and uh, you know, get it really dirty and then I'll clean it up. So we uh, might hang around a little bit for the Gong Club members and uh, berate them a little bit about something, but uh, we're going to let everybody go, everybody else go, and be about your business today. Really appreciate you coming uh, along with us uh, to enjoy this vintage Smith & Wesson. Because you know, you know I'm happy about it because I love revolvers. And, uh, you know, it just takes me back to my youth. It's really fun. Life is good. I always wanted to do that. Okay, since you guys are here at the end of the video, I wanted to remind you of our friends over at SDI, the Sonoran Desert Institute. They're a fully accredited online distance learning program where you become certified in gunsmithing uh, or get an associate's degree in firearms technology. It's sdi.edu. And also, a uh, big announcement lately on the channel, our shirts are now with uh, Matt from Demolition Ranch's new company, Bunker Branding. So you can find shirts like this and many others over at uh, bunkerbranding.com slash chicago 45 or just go uh, into the description and look for the link and also you can go to our website and find that stuff and more things like hickok well, our website is called hickok 45.com and you can also find our uh, twitter which is hickok 45 facebook hickok 45 uh, the real hickok 45 on instagram uh, there is a hickok 45 and son youtube channel there's a john underscore hickok 45 Instagram. Our videos are also on full30.com. And uh, also those of you who have been asking us to become a Patreon member, you can also find the link to that in the description. I appreciate all those people, of course. And basically anything that you need to know is uh, probably going to be on the website somewhere. So we try to keep it easy for you guys. You know, there's no excuses because we know you're already on the internet. If you're looking at this, you're probably on the internet. So all you got to do is open your browser. And if you're on your TV, I know you got a phone in your pocket. So no excuses. All right. Uh, okay. Now what you should do is uh, watch one of these other other videos, as long as it's one of ours, because everything else is uh, is not good, of course. All right. Thank you.